Good morning. <clears throat> it's a pleasure to talk to you this morning. I wanted to say that uh, my connection with uh, the, your church has gone back a long way, even before that church existed. Uh, when we were kids, our, our parents made arrangements that in case anything ever happened to them, uh, that the, uh, a, a couple there would uh, uh, take us in and finish raising us, and that was Ed and Marjorie Morris. Uh, that was before the United Church was started. Uh, we also have connections with with uh, your church, as uh, my uncle Danny was a pastor there at United for six years, and then my son-in-law Kyle Howell was was pastor there for six years when it became New Beginnings, and uh, so I have a lot of friends there, and I, I appreciate the opportunity to read for you this morning. I'm going to read Second Corinthians chapter one in the NIV. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all his holy people throughout Achaia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Now this is our boast. Our consciousness, our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom but on God's grace. We do not write you anything that you cannot read and understand. And I hope that as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus. Because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and, and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this? Or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put us put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. I call God as my witness, and I stake my life on it, that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth. Not that we lorded over your faith, but we work with you for your joy, because it is by faith you stand firm. God bless you this morning. 